So at the end of last year, I set myself a little challenge to do with the racing and which races I wanted to check. And today is the day we're gonna go through it and see where I've got to, because I've officially done the last race that I've entered this year. So yeah, it's up, it's been up behind me the whole year. So let's see where we're at. Since then, a lot has happened, and on the running front, I've done about 141 runs, kind of averaging three a week, so not many, many, but I've also done plenty of cycling and a lot more moving, so like walking or just general like exercise. So yeah, did I actually make any progress towards this lovely bingo board? So to save me having to keep rustling this, I'll try and put a graphic somewhere and just tick them off when we're talking about one of them. If you didn't see the video where I originally set these, I'll link that up above so that if you wanted to, you could go and check that out. It was just a kind of like nine little prompts to get me thinking about races. Maybe like to try not to overdo it on races because I know sometimes you can just like tick, 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 do all the races. But this was kind of just to focus it in, maybe try and get races that ticked as many as possible. So that way I didn't have to do as many. Just thinking about cost and kind of like getting to races and the sustainability of that kind of thing. So I wanted to kind of decrease the amount of races that I did and but also kind of start doing a little challenge. So this was especially useful for me because I wasn't really chasing any PBs or trying to do any like big city races. So it was just a nice little gentle build where you can kind of make it your own. So yeah, let's start with prompt number one. And that was overnight stay. So this is the one that I haven't been able to do. I just haven't, well, first of all, I've not really found a race, well, I have found races, but I haven't found a race like, at the right time in order to feed, for me to really think about an overnight race. So at the start of the year, we didn't have our little cat who's actually <laughs> just sat over there. And now we do. So it's kind of like a different landscape now. If we want to go for an overnight stay to do a race, we have to think about her and like where she's getting food and who's going to look after her and things like that. So it's a bit more of a logistical nightmare now than it was beforehand. Although she is pretty chill, so I'm pretty sure we could just leave her some food. <laughs> so yeah, that's the one that I didn't do so far. And that was problem number one. So number two on the bingo board, I know for many you might have struggled with this one, but for me, it was kind of easy. So this was an inaugural race, which means the race that is going on for the first time. And I did Fear and Fury, which is a 10 mile race, and it was put on by my running club. So I just went along, did it, and got muddy, got a bit wet. <laughs> and came back. Definitely tough, there was lots of mud. You basically had to cross over a river where like the water came up to like my waist, which I wasn't really expecting in the middle of a running race. Oh, at one point you like, you were running up this hill and you can see the finish line to your left, but you run straight past it. And then you have to go down a hill. And all the while you're just thinking about, I've got to get back up that hill to get to that finish line. So I wasn't quite prepared for the hills that were in Fear and Fury. But maybe if I do it again, I will know there's hills and that is quite a tough trail race. Yeah, there's quite a lot on the mud and fields. And I think fields are actually kind of some of the worst because with all the cattle and stuff that you use it, it gets so like up and down, up and down. And you don't really know what's underneath your foot. It's not flat like you thought you think it would be. So I got around that 10 miles in one hour 47. So not potentially the best day out of the races, but it was the first race that I had done since having a bit of time off of running. And I thought that was actually pretty good. You know, it wasn't the best, but I still did it and I still kind of enjoyed it, you know? Prompt number three, so up in the corner, so you could always ease the count as across or down, was a volunteer at a race. And I ticked this off very, very early in January by helping out at the first chance 10K on a long Exeter kind of riverside area. I was at Marshall Point and it did rain, so I was kind of stood there in my waterproof summer jacket, encouraging runners, because we were basically the turnaround point, that they just had to get back to base now, they've done most of it. The first chance to take it is kind of like just a chance right at the start of the year, so it's normally like mid to early January, where you do a 
pretty flat 10k course and then obviously the goal is, is that next year you can set that benchmark a little bit differently hopefully it's a little bit faster but obviously some years it might not so you set that benchmark at the start of the year and then that's kind of how you track your progress throughout the year so it's a nice kind of race for everyone it doesn't really matter if you're speedy doesn't matter if you're slow it's just to you know see where you're at in yourself moving on down to the middle row we've got number four which was a repeat race so for this one i traveled back down to exmouth and did the mare half marathon so this is i think it's billed as a trail race but it is kind of part and part so it's half road and a half trail i would say and yeah, you just, you just run along, you run from Exmouth along a path, a cycle path to Budley and then you run back from Budley to Exmouth along the coast path. So there's definitely a lot of elevation. I was going to say, I think I filmed some of it, but I don't, I don't think I did. I ended up being the fourth female across the line, which meant that I got the first senior prize because the other, I think there was one other female in that top four and obviously they got placing trophy whereas I got the age group prize so that was quite nice I got like a free entry to another race of theirs but I didn't actually end up taking that place because I just I just didn't know what I wanted to do <laughs> so and then I just wasn't prepared by the time a race did come up but the previous time I had done that was 2019 and I remember I really wanted to get under two hours for a half marathon when I first did it and we kind of on the way back there's a really big hill just coming out of Budley and I could just see my time slipping away on this hill because I just, I didn't want to run up it basically. But this year I did a bit more running hopefully and I came away with a 10 minute PB. So I did it in just under that two hour time frame this year. So in four years, I've actually managed to do it. And I got, it was like one hour 58, something like that. So I managed to get the under two hours that I wanted in 2019. And yeah, it was 10 minutes faster than I had done previously. I think potentially there wasn't quite as many females doing it this year because I don't think I was that high up the billing last year. But maybe, maybe everyone was just like a little bit behind me. It was actually a really nice day as well. So there wasn't really any rain. It was like mild. It was good. It was a good half marathon day. <laughs> Prop number five was an evening race. So m lots of races happen on a Sunday morning. But obviously you get those ones maybe midweek. Uh, in the evening or you know maybe there's just a Saturday night race especially during the winter it's quite easy to get hold of evening races in the UK at least because well it's dark all the time so you might as well just do the run in the dark and make it a thing so for me I've got two different races that could potentially go under this one and I'm gonna choose the Holden Halloween run so if you haven't watched that video I did a little tiny vlog about that race it was by Purple Gecko Running and it was a 10k and it was Halloween themed. So there was some zombies, loads of people dressed up. I had a little ghost on my t-shirt. Yeah, again, I keep picking the ones with hills. <laughs> I think maybe we need to look for some flat races next year. But this had some hills and so there was a lot of walking. Again, not my best 10k time. So quite a lot of night races make it quite hard to see where you're running. But for this one, it was two laps. So the first lap you kind of did as the sun was setting and the second lap was where it was definitely dark. So that was quite nice because you weren't like constantly thinking like, oh, where am I going next? Where am I going next? You'd already done the lap once. So you knew where you were off to. And it just kind of took a little bit of that nervousness away from running in the dark. So definitely recommend if you're new to night running is doing a race basically because then you've got people guiding you around you've got aid stations if you need it one thing that um night races definitely help with a little bit uh, just a little bit is the hills though because once it gets dark the only bit of the hill that you can see is the bit that's in your head torch so definitely you know because then you have to just run what you can see and you can't really see the hill if all you can see is like two steps ahead of you so if you hate hills, maybe try doing them in the dark so you, you know, you can just think, right, one more step, one more step, one more step. And then eventually you'll get to the top. <laughs> and then you should be able to go back down. You know, unless it's flat at the top. So we're already over halfway. We're at number six out of nine. So this was travel sustainably to a race. So there were quite a few where potentially I got the train over or I walked over because I did a series in 
well, in the city right next to me, so that doesn't take long. But the one I'm gonna include for this one was a race over in Taunton, because I thought that was quite far away from where I am. And basically what we did is the running club put on a minibus for us. So we, there was quite a few of us in the minibus and we all went over that way as one group rather than everyone having their own transport. So whilst it's not, you know, super, super sustainable, it is potentially more of a accessible option for loads of you. So car sharing or lift sharing or working out how to get there by other means rather than just taking your own car with just you in it. So I thought that would be a nice one to include here. And Taunton, well, oh. So Taunton race, I was down for a half marathon to start with. And then I just, by the time it got round to it, I didn't think I'd be able to manage the half marathon. So instead I've just did a 10K and actually I really enjoyed it. It was on a day of a storm, unfortunately. So we were kind of running through the woods at one point and there like, was thunder and lightning and lots of rain. So it, like the weather could have made it better, but I enjoyed it still. And it was quite pretty, lots of woods, lots of trail. You start on the race course and then you ran down into the woods behind it. And then you're, you're finished at the race course as well. So you came back to the race course and pretended you were a horse. You didn't do a full lap. <laughs> so number seven was a nice easy prompt and that was just to do a trail race. And as you've already heard from quite a few of the little descriptions I've done, I did do quite a few trail races. So for this one, I'm just gonna double up the first trail race that I did of the year. And that was Fee and Fury. So the 10 mile race, obviously I could have picked the Holden one, potentially the Mare half marathon, the Taunton one. And so there's been, there's been a few trail marathons, but uh, not marathons, I haven't done a marathon, don't worry. Um, trail races, but I'll go with that one because it was the first one, so I feel like you know, if I'm doubling up somewhere, I should just do that. So moving on, we're almost at the end now. We're at number eight. So for this one, it was a race series. So if you haven't ever done a race series, this is simply where a race company kind of do, well, either the same race throughout, you know, maybe they do it once a month or every other month. And it's kind of just to track your pro progress. So it's on the same course that way. Or it can also be that they put on a bunch of races and they make that a series. So maybe they do a race, I don't know, I'm gonna talk through locations near me. So maybe they do a race over at Holden Forest, then maybe they do a race over at Killerton, then maybe they do a race a little bit further away in Dartmoor. So you've got kind of three different races, but they're gonna tie them together with a series so if you do X amount of those races, you get series points and you kind of stack up towards your final finishes kind of standing. Does that make sense? So even though they're different races, they're still counting them towards the same end goal, essentially. And you might get a special kind of like series medal if you do that, or you might be eligible for series placings as well. So in this case, I've done one where it was the same race. It, they actually did it every month. I didn't do every single one because I think that would have been six of them. I think I did three in the end. So this was the 5K summer series down along Exeter Riverside. It literally just, it was actually a two lap course for a 5K. So not much scenery to do. You kind of go around the park out towards the bridge and then turn around and then you go around the park again and back again. Um, it's supposed to be quite speedy, so I did actually manage to get 5k PB on the very first one I did of that series, which was quite nice. I, I got a sub 22 for the first time for a 5k. However, my times did not match it in the other two after that. I think the next one was really hot, then the next one was raining. So, <laughs> not the perfect weather and I just wasn't feeling it. And I think if... I remember rightly, there is another another lovely video about that race. So if you wanna have a look at what kind of that 5K feels like, there's a video and you can go watch it. Final prompt number nine out of nine, and we have got a race in your home county. So for me, that is Devon, and I'm gonna include the first race that I did of the year that was in my home county, and that was the Exmouth Express down along Exeter Seafront, it was a five mile race. And I think again, I was fourth female, but I didn't get a prize for this one. <laughs> so fourth female, I actually did it in quite a quick time, but I can't remember what it was. It felt speedy, it felt hard, 
and yeah I don't know I might do it again but it was quite um tough it's a weird distance you're not it's like just it's under 10k but it doesn't feel like it. it feels like you know that you're still running really hard really like I guess because it's between that 5k and 10k pace there it yeah it just felt hard <laughs> and so that was my ninth race excellent race there's not much to say it was again it's just an out and back along Exeter free seafront so if you do the park run over at Exeter, it's quite similar to that only obviously a bit longer because well, it has to be <laughs> there's quite a few actually races that I didn't include so X to Axe I did that this year what else did I do this year actually maybe X to Axe is the only thing that I haven't included um in this racing challenge but I guess I guess that could be my trail race if I really wanted it to be so that would have been eight different races for a total of eight counters on my nine boards so did any of you take on any challenges with your races this year I know it's a bit of a weird concept isn't it but if you have something that you know that surprised you or anything I think I might set one next year but I think I might make it a little bit different maybe like a race that scares you things like that just to try and like force me to do races that are out of my comfort zone so eight out of nine for me pretty good now I just need to start thinking about my goals and what races I want to do for next year.